Hey everybody, I'm in Chantaburi, one of the lesser known gems of Thailand and uh, a place with a little bit of colonial French influence as well. Some interesting history. So let's take a walk together and have a little look around and I'll tell you a few things about this place. Chantibori is an old Thai town set on a river that flows into the Gulf of Thailand and it was a trading port uh, connecting uh, Old Siam, the old name for Thailand, connecting Old Siam with China, India, and Arabia and uh, Europe eventually and uh, it's also a hub for the gem business so the hills around Chantiburi uh, had a lot of uh, gem mining in the past times and so the cutting of gemstones uh, became something that this town was known for and even though the mines have pretty much been exhausted around the area the gem cutting business is still a big thing here and a lot of people come from different countries to do trading gem trading here so we've just come onto the old main street of Chantibori and it's a lovely morning. Let's take a little bit of a look around. So, there's some interesting history with this place. The French took it over for a while in the time when France controlled Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos. They had several conflicts with Thailand for a while they took this region of Thailand. And we're gonna head down here to see, to see a little bit of a remnant of that, of uh, those times. in the form of an old French church. A French church in Thailand.
So these days it's a sleepy riverside town. No more international trading vessels plying their way up this river. But in recent times it's become a place where Thai people have started to come to check out this interesting quirk of history here with the French church here and also with the cute riverside buildings back on the old main street there. Let's turn around and head back. Chantibori is the main city in the eastern part of Thailand on the eastern seaboard. You can say central eastern Thailand. And uh, it's also a gateway for the really beautiful islands in this region. Islands such as Koh Chang, Koh Kut, Koh Mak, and some other little ones as well. It's like a bigger version of Trat. So if you go a little bit further to the east towards Cambodia direction. The next town after this is Trat, the next town of any size, which has a similar ambience and that's also worth a look if you're passing through. But Chantibori is like a bigger version of that, but it's definitely got a bit more to offer, I can say. As it's on the road to Cambodia, 
of course, like Trat, it makes an excellent stopover point before you continue on and cross the border into Cambodia. So I've been through this place quite a few times. And yeah, like I said earlier, it's definitely one of the hidden gems of Thailand. In fact, I'd go to say I'd go so far as to say it's uh, one of my favorite little towns in Thailand. And if I were looking for a little town in Thailand that has a good balance of life, a place where I wanted to kind of get away from it all, this would be probably top of my list, to be honest. It's got a lot of things going for it. In recent years, a lot of young Thai people are rediscovering places like this. Places that were neglected and falling apart. And uh, they've realized the value of these kinds of heritage places. And a lot of these small businesses, you see, have been set up by those kinds of people. And, and local, local uh, domestic Thai tourism has really taken off in places like this. And uh, yeah, if you subscribe and follow the channel, You'll be seeing a lot more places like this as well. These are the kinds of places where you get the original Thai experience. You still get the Thai smile. You still get people going out of their way to help you. When you're in the tourist type places <coughs> in uh, Thailand, not so much of the Thai smile around anymore. And there's more of a kind of cash grab mentality. But coming to places like this restores your faith and you get a taste of the old Thailand. The Thailand that made Thailand a very popular country for travelers. Back in the golden era of backpacking days. Which of course means the 1960s and 70s. Hello. Hello.
Looks like some good fried chicken there. Some nice noodles. I'm not sure, but this could be the city pillar shrine. It looks like a pillar, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's the kind of place where you still get a nice cherry hello as you go out for your morning stroll. A few of these old buildings have uh, definitely a, a distinct kind of French influence to them as well. And they look like they would date from the French time. A great spot there isn't it for a bite to eat and a nice river view since I first came here oh I don't know how long ago it was a fair while ago it was a fair while ago the place has really taken off I can say I think this is my third time coming through here over about 10 years something like that but it's really taken off it's just uh, a great little place, a gem. It's a gem and it's a place where they do gem cutting and used to do gem mining. So yeah, it goes together somehow.
Look like they were having a special event at the temple back there. All right, so this traffic circle here in the middle of town with the nice water fountain. Um, right next to it here, you can see there's this interesting looking market. It's one of my favorite ones in Thailand, actually. So, as I mentioned, Chantaburi is famous for gems. Well, this is not the gem market. The gem market is back where we started our walk. And it's just a collection of small places where they work with gems. But this is the main market, the central market of Chantaburi. And it's very, very colorful. Shrimp fresh off the boat. Because we're very, very close to the sea here. And it's, yeah, it's uh, only a short distance from here to take a boat to the beautiful islands that are just off the coast here, as we mentioned earlier. And actually, can I say it's my favorite market in Thailand? No, I th didn't actually mean this market. I meant another one that's in Chantaburi. There's a few good ones. There's a few good ones in Chantaburi, actually. And this one is cool. But there's actually another one that I was thinking of. Got them a bit mixed up there. But I think we're gonna finish up with this one. and let you find the other one yourself. Because I always love to leave something for you guys to find. There's always a bit more, but I like to show you pretty much the highlights. Well, I was really relieved when I came in here yesterday evening to see that the Riverside Hotel is being renovated and it's reopening. Uh, because this place is a real classic. It's been here for a long time and now they've got new owners and they're really doing it up well. So that was great. Perfect. When I first walked up here, I thought the place was closed and then I saw they're just getting set up for a soft reopening and I was able to score a place to sleep here. So that was great. The owner's really nice from Sri Lanka. Speaks good English, so I recommend this place. It used to be in all the old guidebooks as well. So check it out, guys. Well, I'm here outside the Chantabori bus station and it's time to head on to the next place. Hope you guys enjoyed the look around Chantabori. It's a lovely place. It's also got a really great park with some lakes in it. It's got a little local style uh, Thai nightlife area. So it's got other stuff to uncover as well. So uh, yeah, hope you guys make it through this way sometime. And uh, see you in the next one. And uh, click subscribe and like and all that stuff. Leave a comment, whatever. It'd be great to hear from you guys. See you in the next one. Don't be late.